guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Liv. So I'm feeling another week of workouts, which I'm excited about. I've changed, this is the second time I've changed my workout split since I posted my last full weeks of workouts and I've been absolutely loving my split. I think it's exactly what I need right now. It's like a perfect schedule for me for summer as a great balance between like weight training and also more functional training, a little bit of cardio. It's just like a very diversified training program right now and it's not like too much for me. I think it's great. I'm working out five days a week with two full rest days, but one of the days is more like a very intentional active rest day where I'll go hiking or something like that. Today is Monday and I'm hitting legs. It's also Memorial Day. I'm filming this, so happy Memorial Day. And the gym closes in an hour and 15 minutes, so we're really gonna need to motor through this workout. Let's hope I can squeeze it in. I'm still splitting up my leg days like how I used to, so I still do like a quad and glute focus day and a hamstring and glute focus day. Today is a hamstring and glute day where I really try to focus on going heavy like mainly on my hamstrings and glutes days that's where I really push heavy hip thrusts and then my quad and glute days is where I'll do hip thrusts but it won't really be my main lift it'll be more towards like the middle or end of my workout and I'll do it a little bit lighter or some sort of like variation of hip thrusts so enough chatting we got to go in there to make sure I can finish Okay, I'm so stoked to share with you guys all my workouts this week. So, to start off every single leg day, I always do some sort of dynamic warm up and then I go into glute activation before I even start my lift. So, here I'm doing a ton of different variations of different hip openers. So, first I'm just doing some froggers by pushing my knees outward a little bit. Then I go into froggers into toe grabs. Then I go into low and slow lateral lunges. I love these to open up the hips. Then this next one I have been obsessed with. I have no clue what it's called, but you basically just drop your knee down to either side. I feel this so dang much and it's helped a ton with my hip mobility. Here, I used to do these all the time in high school for um, in my sports for dynamic warmups. We used to call these C-steps. So we do it by putting our knees behind us and then bringing them forward. Then moving into glute activation. So this is crucial to warm up your glutes to make sure that they fire during your lift. So I just always use mini resistance bands. These are from Holt Fitness Gear. So I just did some normal squats. Then I did one and one half squats, basically come up half the way and then all the way up for a full rep of a squat. Then some squat pulses. And during all of these movements, I'm really keeping the weight on my heels, pushing up through my heels and making sure I'm pushing my knees outward against the band to engage my glutes. Here I'm doing some good old kickbacks, really focusing on driving that heel nice and high, keeping my back nice and flat like there's a board strap to it. Then some fire hydrants for the side of my glute and our smaller glute muscles that we have, really focusing on sweeping that knee outward. Then I love this little combo that I've been doing. These are glute bridges. I do 10 of them. Then I go into 10 abductions and repeat that about two to three times. Then I finished off with some donkey kicks as well. Again, really driving up with my heel. So then, like I said, these are, this is the day that I really try to go heavy with my hip thrusts. So here I'm doing four sets of 12. And I'm also doing this banded as well because that helps to hit our two other smaller glute muscles as well. So when it comes to hip thrust form, I have the middle of my back on the bench. I have my knees stacked over my ankles so that when I lock out at the top of the move, there's a 90 degree angle in my knee. I'm constantly pushing through my heels. As you can see, my toes are really light because I have all of my weight up through my heels. This is gonna help with glute engagement and recruiting the glutes. I'm always pushing my knees out against the band for also some greater glute engagement. And I'm always looking straight ahead to help create a posterior pelvic tilt, which also will help, will help to recruit your glutes. Then moving into some stiff legged deadlifts. I'm obsessed with these. These are amazing for your whole posterior chain, just the back of your leg. Notice how I pick up the weight by first straightening out my back and lifting up with my legs. And then when I come up at the top, as you see, I roll my shoulders back and down. So here we're doing three sets of 12. You really wanna initiate this movement by breaking at your hips and pushing your hips backwards. Think of it as if you're pushing a door closed with your booty. You wanna keep a nice slight bend in your leg to protect your knee. The more bent your leg is, the more it's going to be glute focused as opposed to hamstring focused. So I like to try to find somewhere in the middle. Again, by pushing our hips back, we're pushing our weight back onto our heels. As you can see, my toes are really light when I come up. This again helps to make sure that I'm pulling up by contracting my glutes and just really recruiting my glutes in the movement. I have a nice flat neutral spine, no curving or arching. My neck is in line with my spine and my arms and hands are just simply hooks for the weight. Then I supersetted that with 
three sets of 15 of lateral kicks. Again, this is great for the sides of your glutes that I was talking about. Our two smaller glute muscles, the gluteus medius and minimus. So here I just focus on kicking my leg out to the side. I'm holding a plate on my leg just to increase the difficulty and for a variation from a banded lateral kick. Then I moved into three sets of 15 of glute cable pull throughs. I love these again for all of the back of your leg. Any cues for these are going to be very similar to the stiff leg deadlifts. Again, you want to hinge at your hips by pushing your hips backwards, shifting the weight onto your heels, keeping your toes light. And really when you come up, you're pushing and pulling up through your heels via your glutes and hamstrings to pull you up out of that movement. Our back and spine is going to be nice and neutral. We're going to have no curving, no arching. Again, pretending there is a board strapped to our back. Our neck is still in line with our spine. Here's a side view so you can see just a little bit better. Again, the more bend you have in the knee, the more glute focus it's going to be and the less emphasis it's going to have on your hamstrings. And this is gonna go for any sort of cable work. Anytime you're using the cable machine, as you can see, I'm not letting the weights re-rack themselves. As you can see, they're always lifted. And this is because by doing that is gonna keep constant tension on the cable and therefore constant tension on your muscles throughout the whole movement. So that's always very, very important to keep in mind when using the cables. Then to finish off, I did some glute focus back extensions for two sets of 20. And pay attention to my form. I know it looks a little bit funky, but I'm telling you by doing this, you'll feel it so much more in your glutes as opposed to your lower back, which is what this little machine is meant for. So my back is rounded and my chin is tucked and the weight is on my chest. I'm telling you this is gonna help shift the focus so much more to your glutes and away from your lower back. Your lower back will still be engaged, but there'll definitely will be a greater emphasis on your glutes with form like this. I really need to go because they're closing, but I feel so freaking lean today for some reason. Crazy. It's so nice out. Da, 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 da. That was so freaking good. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna do this every time, but I'm doing a live post workout update because that was such a good workout dude i freaking did it i did a full leg workout in an hour also just like having that time crunch kept had me like keep up the pace of the tempo which just made me have such a better workout because i wasn't lollygagging you know what i'm trying to say so more of the story lesson takeaway is that i should move quicker throughout my workouts and not have such long 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 rest times in between sets when i don't really need it to keep up the tempo and therefore i have a better workout will i do it probably not because i've learned this lesson so many times and I still don't make a change. So clearly I'm on crack right now, but that's it, okay, see ya. Whew, almost got emotional there for a second, but it's just like, life is so freaking beautiful, you guys, and it truly is the little things, like the endorphins for my workout, how blessed I feel to be able to move today, just be healthy enough to get through a workout, and like, movement is a form of freedom. I say that all the time because it's so true, like, Think about if you literally didn't have the ability to get up and go run or get up and get to go lift a weight or even go walk. Like it truly is so freeing to have the independence to move our body. Like it's insane. Ah. Okay, I'm signing off. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hello friends, it is now Tuesday and Tuesdays for me are my upper body push day so I'm hitting chest, triceps, shoulder action. I do some sort of like pulling movements when I'm trying to hit my rear delts on my shoulders. To be honest, I do like a smidgen of rear delts on my push day and my pull day. Also another thing that I've been forgetting to tell you guys is that I do have a step goal. So I'm trying to aim anywhere between like 10 and 12,000 steps a day. Some days I hit it, some days I don't. It really does depend on how active I am. Like if I'm sitting, editing, or filming all day, it's hard for me to hit it, so I might not hit it that day. I don't stress majorly, but I do try to go for some sort of walk daily. Last thing I wanna say that's super important, today is also the day that I do hit cardio. So this is like my only day that I really have like an organized cardio session. So I do it at the end of my lift, only for about like 20 minutes, which you'll see, and I just do a circuit of like five-ish exercises, and that's my cardio for the week. 
Alrighty, moving into our push day. So again, starting with mobility work always. I do this just to open up my shoulders and just to help with mobility. Like I said, just get everything loose and flowing. Ever since I started doing this, I literally can't go back, you guys, anytime. I try to like start my workout without it. I'm like, I can't, I feel rusty, I feel like stiff. So this just helps open everything up, open up my chest, open up my shoulders and just get ready for movement. And then I always like to go into a set or two of push-ups just to get used to some resistance. So here I'm doing one set of 20. And of course, I'm keeping my core nice and tight, making sure my butt doesn't come up or sag too much. And my elbows are actually kind of coming out more towards a 45 degree angle rather than a complete 90 degree angle out from my side. And of course, keeping my neck in line with my spine. And then moving into our main lift, I'm just doing a 30 degree incline press for three sets of 12. I retracted my shoulder blades back and down to really isolate my chest and interior delt muscles. I have my feet planted nice and wide, my heels driven into the floor for a good base. Ever since I started doing this, you guys, I've had so much better control over the weights on upper body day. I used to not do this and I we used to have so much more problem with like flailing the weights and stuff. So this just helps to really give me a good solid base and then therefore isolate the muscles that I'm trying to work. Then I'm super setting that with three sets of 12 of incline flies. This is again for our chest and our interior delt. Same thing applies, shoulder blades back and down, feet planted into the floor, and really focusing on our chest here and just going nice and slow and just feeling our muscles stretching and contracting. And as you can see, I have a slight bend in my elbow to protect my elbow. I have a really big thing, you guys, when people have like pinched straight arms when they're doing this type of stuff, for like lateral raises, it's better to keep just a subtle nice bend just to protect your joints and just to relieve any pressure on them. Then moving into a kind of a little tri set that I did. So I started off with lateral raises for three sets of 10. I dropped my shoulders back and down to really isolate my shoulders and not have my traps be too much into the movement. I come up just where my hands would be about parallel to the ground. Again, keeping a nice slight bend in my elbow. Then I went into pike push-ups for three sets of 12. These, I've been obsessed with these and I think these help to lean out my arms so much. It's basically a shoulder focused push-up. So as you can see, I'm more of in like a teepee shape, basically just coming down into a normal push-up, but I just have more pressure and weight on my shoulders. And then I did up and overs on a bench. I love these just to like throw in during a weightlifting session. I don't know why, I just really like them. So here I just did three sets of 30. Really focused on keeping my abs nice and tight, sucking my belly button to my spine and having that be what's pulling my legs up and over and not depending too much on my arms behind me. Those should only be for a point of balance for you. So I repeated this whole little tricep. Like I said, I did all the exercises back to back. Then I would rest and then I repeated that two more times for a total of three sets altogether. Then one of my gym friends showed me this and I've been obsessed with it. So this is like a tricep push down on the assisted pull-up machine. I did three sets of 15. It's almost like a reverse push up to me, like the way the motion is, but I love this. And I just really focus on keeping my elbows kind of tight to my side, keeping whole, my whole upper body nice and still and just really focus on my triceps contracting and being what's pushing the pad down. And I supersetted that with some bent over reverse flies to hit our rear delts. And like I've been saying, I kind of like keeping everything at like a 45 degree angle as opposed to like a harsh 90 degree angle. So even the dumbbells are slightly tilted in my hands. And when I drive my arms out, they're not straight out from my side. I'm kind of going in a 45 degree angle behind me. I find that really is what targets my rear delts well. And again, keeping a nice slight bend in my elbow. Then I went into tricep kickbacks, just two sets of 10 on each side, keeping my elbows nice and tight to my side, my upper arm nice and still, and just having my elbow be the only hinge involved. Then as a little burner, I just did two sets of dive bombers, two sets of 12. These are challenging, but I love them. And again, I think these help to lean out my upper body so much. It kind of looks like a yoga move, but basically you're gonna dive bomb down. And then when you get to the bottom of it, you're kind of gonna body roll up essentially. I'm telling you, this hits your shoulders, it hits your chest, it hits your triceps, it hits your core. It's amazing, I love it. Okay, then moving into our little hit workout. So here we're doing each movement for 40 seconds on and then we're resting for 20 seconds. So here I'm just doing a jumping squat to a normal squat. 
then these are tough but i love them this is basically a push-up to an overhead press with a bosu ball this is amazing just for your whole upper body but also your core and everything it's a great full body move then I moved into reverse lunge knee drives. Then at the 20 second mark is when you're gonna wanna switch legs. If you have bad knees, you can totally take out the jump, no stress, but basically you're just gonna go into reverse lunge, jump up and drive that back knee right up in the air. Then these are burners, but I love these. These are like kind of bench up and overs, but I'm just using a rower because that's what was next to me. This is great. It also really, really, really engages your core and your upper body is gonna be burning too. It's a full body, full body shenanigan. you guys it is now wednesday it's about like 8 30 in the morning and i'm going for my walk and i know i said i was going to document it for you guys of course i forgot my camera so we're on my phone that's why it may look a little weird also is it just me or like does the sun feel so much better in the morning it's like just like a soft warm hug to me and i love it like the morning sun is something different also i had such a good morning this morning and this walk is just like topping it off i've been feeling i don't know like last night i felt super anxious and just i could feel a ton of tension like right here in the center of my head in my third eye i'm not even kidding so like this morning i did such a long like morning routine of i did card pulls um i did journaling i did an awesome awesome meditation session i like to meditate and i wish i did it more but sometimes it's hard for me to like really really relax but i really made an effort to do that today this morning but i feel genuinely like thoroughly so much better i feel so much more relaxed i know this is kind of off topic for this video but Dude, I think of like my workouts is just like so much more than what I'm physically doing now. Like, especially at this point in my fitness journey, it's completely everything like mentally, emotionally, like taking care of yourself internally because that 100% manifests into your physical health too. Hello, it is now time to lift. So Wednesdays are my upper body pull day. So now I hit back buys and a smidgen of rear delts again. I also do, like this is the day where I would like put abs in. Like you'll see, I, it really depends. I honestly don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. I always come up with my workouts on the fly, but I have been like putting them in like, as like an active rest in between my sets or I'll like super set an exercise and then do an ab exercise as like a mini circuit type thing. I've been doing that thing lately I've been enjoying. Alrighty, it's back day, baby. I low key, well, I don't know. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it, but right now I'm getting the vibe that I love it. So I'm doing again, more mobility work, very similar to what I do on my push day. It's kind of just like very basic upper body mobility work to open up everything. And then I also like to foam roll a little bit on back day as well, just to kind of get some more blood flow going on there. And then I always warm up with the assisted pull-up machine, but I've been kind of mixing up my grips because I have a new low-key goal, very low-key, because it's very premature. I want to do actual pull-ups and not just chin-ups. So I do some with this chin-up grip here. I do 15. And then I alternate and I go into a wide grip as well for 15 and I basically go back and forth. So I'll do two sets of the chin up grip on the assisted pull up for 15, two sets with the wide grip for 15 and I'll alternate between the two. I love this for a warm up. As you can see in the beginning, I rolled my shoulders back and down, dropping my shoulders away from my ears just to minimize the amount of like trap engagement and stuff in this movement and just really engaging my back muscles instead, which is the main purpose. So it really just helps me to isolate the muscles that I'm trying to work. All right, moving into our main lift, a normal barbell row for three sets of 12. Again, I pull the weight up and roll my shoulder blades back and down to engage my back muscles and to mitigate the stress on my traps. It's gonna be a very universal tip for, that I have for you for all of the exercises that you're gonna be doing in the gym. My neck is still in line with my spine. I have a nice slight bend in my knee for an athletic stance. I have a supinated grip, meaning my palms are up towards the sky and I focus on p driving that barbell to my hips via squeezing my back muscles. 
Then I went into a wide grip seated row. I love these just for your upper back and your rear delts, the back of your arms. It's just amazing really for sculpting. So I did three sets of 12 here. As you can see, my elbows are out, meaning it's gonna have more rear delt engagement as well, which I personally want. It really helps to just to tone up the whole back of your arms and your back in general. Then I go into my chin-ups. I've been loving these, still working on them. So I did three sets. My first set was for 10, second set I got eight, third set was six. I've been eating a little bit more, so my numbers are starting to go back up again, which is really promising. And trying to, again, starting by rolling my shoulder blades back and down to engage my lats, engage my back muscles, and drop my shoulders away from my ears. Then moving into bicep curls. I've been loving these on the cables. Um, if you're kind of on the shorter side or your cable is high, you can stand on a little block like I am here to get better, better full range of motion. Again, I'm not letting the cable come completely retracted in order to keep constant tension on the cable and therefore constant tension on my muscles to keep up the intensity throughout the whole move. My arms are tight to my side, my elbows are tight to my side, and my elbows are the only hinge that are involved in the movement. My forearms are the only things that are moving. And by keeping your arms tight to your side, it's really going to help to minimize momentum. These are my freaking holy grail. I love these. This is like a delicacy in my opinion. These are rear delt pulls. Love these. Again, to tone up the back of your arms. I don't know about you. I really store a lot of my fat back there. So I love this. I do three sets of 10, really just focusing on driving the back of my hand outward in a sweeping motion. Nice slight bend in my elbow to protect my elbow. And again, my plane of motion is kind of almost in a 45 degree angle, not necessarily straight up out 90 degree angle for my side. So then I finished off with like a mini core circuit. So I did some back extensions for three sets of 20. And again, now you can see the difference in my form here versus what we did on Monday. So as you can see now, my back is nice and straight. I'm not tucking my chin to my chest. My back isn't rounded. And now, as you can see, I'm really touching my lower back to feel it becoming engaged into the movement. And another big thing to point is I'm not hyper extending where I'm coming up really, really high. As you can see, I'm stopping when I come right in line with my hips. So at the top, top of this movement, you can almost draw a complete straight line from my toes to my head. And then I superseted that with some leg raises. And here I'm trying to show you how to engage your core and your TVA by pulling your belly button to your spine as if someone's like cinching it with a draw cord. Your TVA is your innermost ab muscle. And by engaging that, by drawing your belly button to your spine, I'm telling you, you're going to feel your ab workouts by 10 times more. And it's also definitely 100% gonna help you have a flatter tummy. And so again, I superseded this with back extensions. That was such a good little workout. I feel like it wasn't crazy long, but also you guys, mini win. That it was genuinely my first time ever. I've been lifting for five years and that was my first time ever wearing just a sports bra in the gym. And I'm not even kidding, in a public gym, I've never worn a sports bra for a whole, for a whole workout like that. And that is a mini confidence self-love win right there today, folks. So today goes down in history because that's pretty crazy to me. I've always been so self-conscious of my upper body. I've always had a very broad upper body. And even now, I don't love it. I was really impressed with like my back gains and the muscle definition. I kept looking at me, I was like, Liv, like who is this? But I'm always like at the same time weirdly insecure about being too muscular. It's a weird thing I've always dealt with. I'm sweating currently as I'm speaking in this vehicle. I mean, to the point where I'm just like embracing my body and I'm like, listen, I have a broader upper body. I gain muscle relatively quickly in my upper body. And that's me and I love me because there's only one of me. Happy mother freaking Thursday, boys. It's leg day, part two. So today is a day that I hit quads and glutes. And also, yeah, my warm up is pretty much the same during every leg day. So I'm not gonna include it in this one because I just showed it to you on Monday. All right, it's leg day again though, gotta love it. So here, hack squat. Some people love this, some people hate it. I personally really, really love it. I feel this squat variation so much more on my glutes than I do with the normal barbell back squat. I just feel like I can find a better sweet spot with my feet and it's also less tension and stress on my back and my shoulders. I just love it. So here I'm doing four sets of eight. Now my rule of thumb here is to really play around with your foot placement. If your feet are too close down, it's gonna be really heavily focused on your quads. So again, I kind of station it where if I were to come down in the bottom of the squat here, there's gonna be a 90 degree angle in my knee. It's like the same 
foot placement that I have with hip thrusts. I have it so my knee is completely stacked over my ankle, pushing up through my heel again for complete glute engagement and having my toes be nice and light. Then I go into some reverse lunges for four sets of 10. Love these as well. So I always, always, always say when it comes to any sort of reverse lunge, a Bulgarian split squat, anything like that, you wanna think of it as sinking into the lunge. This is gonna help you visualize sinking back into the lunge and just getting a better, greater stretch in the glutes. My main goal on leg day is always to target the glutes as often as I can in the most efficient way. So that's why a majority of my tips are centered around feeling it more, most in your glutes so here as you can see kind of from this side angle my again my knee is stacked right over my ankle like i've been saying pushing up through my heel and when you go back into that lunge really pushing our hips backwards and down sinking into the lunge this just gets a greater stretch in your glutes which again will increase your range of motion increase the time under tension and therefore just to stimulate your muscle even better always driving up through our heels on leg days. Always, always, always. Then we can't do a leg day without hip thrusts, okay? So again, same pointers like I said on Monday, middle of our back on the bench, we still have a band around our knee. We're throughout the whole time with, of the movement, we're focusing on pushing our knees outward against the band for better glute engagement. We have our knees stacked over our ankles, our toes are nice and light. We have a 90 degree angle when we lock out at the top. We're looking forward during the whole time of the movement to help create a posterior pelvic tilt, which is going to recruit our glutes more. And so here we're doing something called myo reps for three sets. So a myo rep is when you do 10 of them, you come down, you rest for about three to five to 10 seconds. You're gonna go back up like we are here for five more reps, same thing. Then we're gonna come back down and rest for about three to 10 seconds again and finish off with five more reps. And that's gonna be one set. Then you're gonna repeat that two more times for a total of three sets. Now, a lot of people don't always understand the purpose of a band, but I'm telling you, it makes hip thrusts so much more challenging. So please, please, please try it. Not only does it make you have to resist the band by pushing your knees outward with your glutes, which will just help to have better glute engagement, but also having that horizontal plane of resistance is going to help hit and target your gluteus medius and minimus, which are the two smaller glute muscles in your glutes. You have three glute muscles. You have your gluteus medius, minimus, and maximus. Your maximus is the biggest one is what you think of, but the medius and minimus is what's targeted by more abduction work or when you push your knees outward or basically when there's resistance in the horizontal plane. So that's why I keep that in there. So then we're supersetting those myo reps with some banded abductions for three sets of 30. So again, we're gonna repeat both of them back to back, rest, and then repeat them both two more times for a total of three sets. And again, like I just explained, this is to help round out your glutes same thing like i've been explaining i also do this type of movement to round out my glutes these are lateral lunges i did this for three sets of 15. this again is going to mainly hit the top portion of your glute this is going to help to make your glutes look rounder and also from the front your hips kind of look a little bit curvier in a good way because you're kind of going to have the top of your glute is going to be able to be seen from the front sounds crazy but you really can see it and for me it makes me it has given me more of a hourglass figure shape by working this part of my glute these i love these i don't do these often it depends on if the gym's crowded or not but these are kneeling kickbacks for two sets of 15. this is just great because it kind of isolates the glutes even a little bit more than a standing cable kickback does so a big thing to help with stability is i keep my non-working leg as you can see that foot is kind of straight up vertical up and down hooked on the bench just to give me some stability I'm keeping my back nice and flat, no curving or arching in my back, pretending there's a board there, and just really focusing on driving my heel back via my glute. I keep a nice slight bend in my leg, A, because I need to, because my leg is long, but also to help protect my knee and shift more of the focus on my glute as opposed to my hamstring. Guys, I almost forgot again. It's now 8.30 p.m. And I just got back, well, I went home after my leg day, ate dinner, and now I came for my walk because my hair is a mess right now because I didn't have time to go for a walk today. I don't think I'm gonna be walking like super far, probably like a mile, a mile and a half total. But yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful night. 
and I'm in my feels, a little emotional for whatever reason, in a good way. Nostalgia, gratitude, love, appreciation. Sometimes I've just, I'm like, wow, like we're living life. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow for our last day. Hello, hello. It's now Friday and it is my last day of the week that I actually go into the gym for like an organized workout. I walked earlier today like in the afternoon about two miles, 35, 40-ish minutes. Didn't fill in because I feel like you guys got the gist by now. But today is actually a really, really fun training day that I think a lot of you guys may like, especially if like weightlifting isn't your like doesn't light you up. So basically today is like a full body day where I do more functional training and they're called EMOM circuits essentially where it's like every minute on the minute where you'll do an exercise for each minute for a certain amount of reps. Basically it's like circuit training essentially and I'll do it for like anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes. Again, I'm really only weight training only four days a week right now and then my fifth day is like light weights functional training more like agility functional work i've been trying to work on handstands again so it's kind of like a fun play around gym day and i've been liking it okay putting on the greatest mix of all time big booty mix number 15 okay don't want to hear anything about it it's the best one but so then i moved into some Warm up, of course, to start off this little functional training day. So I've been loving the jump rope. I go for literally just as long as I feel like it. Sometimes it's five minutes. Sometimes it's like 20 minutes because I just have been vibing with it. I like trying to work on new tricks and footwork and things like that. I love this. It gets my heart rate up really fast. And she just, we love her. She's bomb. She's fun. She's young. She's spicy. And just to give you a little rundown about how this style of workout works, basically it is called an EMOM workout, meaning there's going to be a specific number of reps that you have to complete of each exercise within each minute. And once you're finished with that amount of reps, whatever time you have left within that minute is your rest time. So basically here I started a timer. And so within minute one, I'm going to be doing 10 single arm dumbbell power snatches on each side. So I'll do 10 on my right, 10 on my left. And then whatever time I have left in that minute, sometimes it's 20 seconds, sometimes it's 30 seconds, sometimes it's 15 seconds, depending on how fast I did them, is my rest time. Then again, keeping up with that timer, once the second minute begins, that's when you start your second exercise. So here I'm doing 10 push up to rows. Each time you do a push up is one. So you really are only doing five rows on each side. Then here I did 24 air squat to goblet squats or basically 12 of each. You don't need to use a weighted ball. You can use a kettlebell, a dumbbell, whatever you would like, but this will just to help to add in some difficulty and to spice it up. Next is like has been one of my favorite moves of all time lately. So it's basically a weighted step up to a knee drive press. So I'm doing a step up, opposite knee is coming up and driving up. And when I drive that knee up, I'm also pushing up the dumbbells to the sky. So I have nice light weights here. All I'm using for all of the previous exercises has been eight pounds. And then I think it's like a 20 pound weighted ball, I believe. But this one is amazing to, it gets your core engaged like crazy. And it also works your shoulders, works stability, works balance. It's incredible. I love this one. So again, eight on each leg. Then keeping up with the pattern, when the fifth minute begins, that's when we go into this duo of exercise. So here we're doing 10 supermans. This is amazing for your back, for your glutes, just everything, I love it. Into 12 reverse plank kicks. These are harder than they look, okay? Mark my words. You wanna keep your butt from sagging. Even here, I feel like I could have pushed my hips up higher to the sky, but just focus on driving your hips up. This engages your core, it engages your hamstrings, it engages your arms. Then for minute six, we're going into 15 yoga ball tuck-ins. As you can see, my upper body is super, super straight. Shoulders are pretty much over my wrists, keeping my core nice and tight, pulling my belly button through my spine, really focusing on stability ability here and bringing in my knees via my core. Then for our last minute, we are doing leg raises for about 15 to 20 reps. Usually the last minute of the rounds, I always just kind of do as many as I can. 
But again, focusing on pulling our belly button down to our spine. We don't want this big arch in our back that's gonna cause strain on our lower back and not engage our core very well. Then at the end, I felt like practicing my handstands, <laughs> but I'm really not good at them. So if you have any sort of tips or pointers, please drop them in the comments. I would appreciate that so much because I really wanna be able to freaking do a handstand and I feel like they're so hard. I really struggle on like bringing my legs. I'm forward. I need to focus on keeping my core tighter, but they are dang tough. Good morning, you guys. Happy Saturday. It's about 11.30, and like I said, I only have five like distinct training sessions throughout the week, but then I also really have been enjoying hiking lately just because there's obviously... Utah's beautiful. That's where I live, if you don't already know. There's so much hiking around, and it's been so beautiful because it's June. So usually for one of the days during the weekend, I'll go for some sort of longish hike just to get moving and just to be outside, and I just genuinely love it so much. All right, so we're officially back. My watch says that we hiked about 3.85 miles, in case you're curious. But yeah, that's pretty average for how long my hikes usually last, anywhere from like an hour and a half to two and a half hours, anywhere from like the three to five mile range, depending on what I do and how steep it is. And yeah, that's pretty much what my full week of workouts consists of. Sunday is a rest day. I will probably still go for a walk just to try to hit my steps, either whether it being like eight to 10K. Also, I don't want you guys to watch this video and make it seem like overwhelming, that like, oh my gosh, I'm only going two days a week, three days a week, whatever. That's only the amount of time of exercise don't stress about it like it's taken me i've been working out for five years it's why how i've built up the point of being able to hit the gym five times a week and walking and stuff like that i also have a very flexible schedule so i have more time to be this active throughout my day-to-day -day. thank you guys for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope it was helpful i'm sending you guys so much love and hopefully i'll see you in the next one Peace out.